we're 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 not in a fair fight. Mm -hmm. we're, yeah. we're we're already outmatched and out at uh, all points. I was really curious as to how much she knew musically. I threw out another name of somebody we both love. Mm -hmm. I said, Michael, no, she on our level too. He said, no, no, she isn't. She takes lessons. Did Cat Williams just spark a firestorm with his allegedly shocking revelation about Beyonce? Did the veteran comedian just claim that both Prince and Michael Jackson despised her? Was she really the one Prince was dissing here? I am a musician. Um, I don't sample, <laughs> you know, uh, it's not Memorex. I go on stage and my microphone is on. Reportedly, Williams didn't hold back, allegedly throwing a bombshell accusation that Beyonce's rise to the top was nothing short of manipulative, leaving both Prince and MJ fuming behind the scenes. If you can recall, you'd remember Kat and Prince were quite good friends. He was a, a high thinker and um, a, a guy that was always 30 steps ahead of whatever the curve was. So what exactly did she do to allegedly earn the ire of these musical legends? Was there more to the story than just the music? Let's dive into the controversy that could shatter Beyonce's carefully curated image. Reportedly, Michael Jackson once threw some shade at Beyonce saying she takes lessons, she ain't that good. It was a surprising comment especially considering how huge she is today. It wasn't just about her dance moves. There might have been more to it. On the other hand, Prince had a different vibe with Beyonce. He actually offered to teach her piano and seemed surprised that she was so knowledgeable about music. Both legendary artists had their own takes on Beyonce's talent, but it's clear they respected her in different ways. I was really curious as to how much she knew musically. Michael Jackson's comment about Beyonce, saying she takes lessons, she ain't that good, could be seen as a subtle jab though it's hard to say for sure. He was known for his perfectionism and might have been hinting that Beyonce wasn't at his level when it came to raw, natural talent, even though she's obviously incredible in her own right. As for Prince, his offer to teach Beyonce piano and his surprise at her musical knowledge might have been his way of questioning the depth of her musical skills, especially when it came to the technical side of things. Prince, being a self-taught genius, often valued raw musical ability over what he might have seen as industry-driven success. This could tie into the idea of industry plants, where some artists might rise to fame because of their image connections or looks rather than just talent. Prince was critical of modern music trends, including the overuse of samples, feeling it was a shortcut that took away from true creative artistry. For him, it was all about originality and craftsmanship, something he didn't feel was always present in mainstream music at the time. Um, I don't sample, <laughs> you know. It's not Memorex, I go on stage and my microphone is on. Prince's comments about the overuse of samples could definitely be seen as indirectly targeting songs like Beyonce's Crazy in Love, which heavily samples the Chai Lights, Are You My Woman, Tell Me So. While he didn't specifically call out Beyonce, his criticism of sampling in modern music aligns with the idea that artists may lean too heavily on previous material rather than creating something entirely original. For someone like Prince, who was all about innovation and originality, this kind of musical recycling didn't sit well with him. And it might have been a broader critique of the industry, including Beyonce's work. As for Kellis calling out Beyonce for sampling her song Milkshake without permission, it adds another layer to the conversation about originality in Beyonce's career. While some might argue that sampling is a normal part of the music industry, others like Kellis feel it's a form of appropriation or a shortcut to success. This isn't an isolated case either. Over the years, Beyonce has faced criticism for borrowing from other artists without always giving proper credit or permission. And then there's the longstanding feud with Janet Jackson. The rivalry has been fueled by a mix of professional and personal drama, with some speculating that it started when Beyonce Beyonce was compared to Janet in the media. There were also rumors about Beyonce overshadowing Janet at various points in her career, particularly after the infamous 2004 Super Bowl halftime show incident where Janet's wardrobe malfunction overshadowed the performance. Some people believe Beyonce's rise to superstardom came partly at Janet's expense, adding fuel to the tension between them. And she missed oh my God. the part. She was supposed to perform at the party. 
but she missed it because of there was it was storming in New York. And so you're just saying she's issues. irresponsible. Why did Janet Jackson accuse Beyonce of stealing from multiple artists? Charlemagne the God once suggested Beyonce could surpass Michael Jackson. Beyonce, if she's not already, she's absolutely will be on that same level. She will be looked upon in the in the same regard, if not more as Michael Jackson was. Was this comparison fair or did it disrespect MJ's legacy? We're diving into all the drama today, so stick around as we break down the hidden tensions between Michael Jackson, Prince, and Beyonce. First up, we got a story involving MC Hammer, Michael Jackson, and Beyonce. Apparently, MC Hammer says MJ once called him the best dancer in the game. You know you're the greatest dancer ever. No, 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 Hammer. You, you, you're the greatest I've ever seen. I said, oh, no, 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 no. Wow. You're the greatest dancer. It ain't even close, man. You're the greatest dancer. He said, Hammer, the stuff you're doing is very complicated. But here's the twist. When Hammer hinted that maybe someone else was an even better dancer, he was clearly talking about Beyonce. MJ apparently shot back saying, she takes lessons, she ain't that good. I threw out another name of somebody we both love. Mm -hmm. I say, Michael, no, she on our level too. He say, no, no, she isn't. She takes lessons. Michael Jackson's dance moves were legendary and all his own. Unlike most artists who hire choreographers, MJ was the mastermind behind his own routines. So when he made that comment about Beyonce taking lesson, it was kind of a subtle jab, implying that while she was an amazing performer, her moves weren't exactly original. Then to top it off, Prince reportedly mentioned in an interview that he'd offered to teach Beyonce piano, expressing surprise that she even knew about music. That definitely added fuel to the fire of Michael's opinion. I was really curious as to how much she knew musically. I was just trying to show her some chords on the piano and help her to uh, respect the fact that if she learns piano a la Aretha Franklin and Ray Charles and things like that, I mean, it's the sky's the limit as to what she could do. At first glance, Prince's comment about offering to teach Beyonce piano might seem like a casual remark. But knowing Prince, who was always careful with his words, it's clear he knew exactly what he was implying. For Prince, it wasn't just about Beyonce's musical knowledge. It was about the authenticity of her talent. As a self-taught musical genius who wrote, produced, and played everything on his own tracks, Prince seemed to be suggesting that Beyonce's rise to fame had more to do with her looks and industry connections than with real musical chops. This was a stark contrast to Prince's own path, where every note was earned through relentless dedication and skill. And Prince didn't stop there. In a 1998 interview, he also criticized the overuse of sampling in modern music, saying it watered down originality. For him, music should be about innovation and pure artistry, not relying on past hits to make a mark. I am a musician. Um, I don't sample, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's not Memorex. I go on stage and my microphone is on. Mm -hmm. This was another subtle jab at Beyonce, who, along with that Jay-Z, is known for sampling other artists' music. A prime example is Beyonce's massive hit, Crazy in Love, which samples the Chilites' Are You My Woman? Tell Me So. While sampling can be a creative way to pay homage, or add flavor to a song, Prince viewed it as a shortcut to originality, especially when artists don't properly credit the original creators. This kind of criticism resurfaced when Kellis called out Beyonce and Pharrell Williams over the Renaissance album. Kellis took to social media in 2022, claiming that Beyonce's track Energy sampled her 2003 hit Milkshake without her permission. She made it clear that she wasn't asked for clearance or given any credit, which sparked a bigger conversation about artists using others' work without giving proper acknowledgement. My mind is blown too because the level of disrespect and utter ignorance of all three parties involved is astounding, she wrote. I heard about this the same way everyone else did. Nothing is ever as it seems. Some of the people in this business have no soul or integrity and they have everyone fooled. The issue of not giving credit to original artists has come up more than once in Beyonce's career. It's not just about sampling. She's also faced accusations of borrowing from other artists without proper acknowledgement. From dance moves to outfits and even entire music video concepts, there's been plenty of chatter about Beyonce taking inspiration without giving due credit. And who could forget the drama surrounding her hit song, If I Were a Boy? That track stirred up its own controversy, with some critics suggesting it was heavily inspired by earlier works without properly crediting those influences. If I were a boy, 
Turns out she stole this song. This number one ballad from Beyonce's I Am Low, Sasha Fierce, was written by BC Jean, who was inspired by the idea after a recent breakup. If I were a boy. After writing If I Were a Boy with producer Toby Gad, Beyonce initially shopped the song around as a lead single. But once her team got wind of it, they decided Beyonce should record her own version. BC, the original writer, was credited as the songwriter, which threw her off. She never intended for anyone else to sing it and was kind of shocked when it came out on her album. In 2011, she said, it's an amazing compliment, but I was like, that's great, but it's going to be on my album. It seems like she didn't fully understand how the process worked at the time. Later, BC downplayed the idea that her song was stolen, clarifying, the story is not as bad as everyone's saying it is. It's pretty much the best breakup ever and the best experience ever. She even joked that the song would still be on her album coming out in January. Sure, but it's probably safe to say there was a little more to it than she let on. At least she got a hefty check out of the deal, right? But that wasn't the only time Beyonce faced accusations of copying. Her countdown music video also sparked controversy, as fans pointed out similarities to a routine by Belgian dancer and choreographer Anne Theresa de Kiersmeiker. The comparisons were so striking that fans created side by side videos to highlight just how much was lifted. Beyonce later admitted that the video was meant to be an homage, but it still raised questions about just how original some of her ideas really were. Clearly, the Ballet Rosas, Danse Rosas, was one of many references for my video countdown, she said in a statement to the New York Times. It was one of the inspirations used to bring the feel and look of the song to life. And Teresa de Kiersmaker wasn't too happy about Beyonce's homage in the countdown video. She felt that Beyonce's team should have at least given her a heads up before directly borrowing her work instead of just calling it an homage. Anne pointed out, there are protocols and consequences to such actions, and I can't imagine Beyonce and her team are not aware of it. It's clear that for Anne, this wasn't just a creative inspiration. It was a blatant steal without proper acknowledgement. And if that wasn't enough, Beyonce allegedly took Baby Boy from a struggling singer-songwriter. In 2003, artist Jennifer Armour sent her demo of Got A Little Bit Of Love For You to Beyonce's record label, Columbia Records. A few months later, Jennifer heard Baby Boy on the radio and was stunned by how similar it sounded to her song. She filed a lawsuit but lost because she couldn't prove Beyonce had actually heard her demo before writing Baby Boy. To top it off, Beyonce also faced accusations of stealing dance moves during her Formation World Tour. Dancer and choreographer Marlon Oritz called her out for copying moves from her troupe show, De La Guarda. Marlon took to Instagram explaining that while inspiration is one thing, it would have been nice for Beyonce and her team to give credit where it was due, especially to struggling artists like herself and her colleagues. Beyonce, you have the nerve to steal exact concepts and choreography from other real creative geniuses. You stole from Breaking Surface, you stole the stomping from De La Guarda. Forza Bruta. It's okay to be inspired, but at least make the effort to make it your own. It seems Beyonce's reputation for song stealing followed her all the way back to her Destiny's Child days. Producer Terrence T. Rob Robinson filed a $200 million lawsuit against Destiny's Child, claiming they stole his song, Glorious, that he had produced in 2000. According to him, he played the song for Beyonce's father and manager, Matthew Knowles, hoping it would help launch his career. But Matthew allegedly disappeared with the song and months later, Survivor dropped with no credit given to Terrence. He later said, I know right now I would be one of the biggest, most sought after producers. It's unclear what happened with the lawsuit, but it likely got settled out of court. Then there's the story of Crazy in Love, one of the most iconic pop tracks of the 2000s. Beyonce once claimed the song came from a light bulb moment in the studio, saying she was looking crazy one day. And that's when she and producer Rich Harrison came up with the idea. But Rich tells a different story. According to him, after playing a sample of the track for Beyonce, she told him, I love the idea. Now write the song. I'll be back in two hours. Despite being hungover, he wrote the full song and played all the instruments before she returned. 
The only part Beyonce actually wrote was the bridge, which is hardly the same as being the main writer of the entire song. And now let's move on to Irreplaceable. I wrote all the lyrics. She helped put some of the, she helped put a lot of the melodies and harmonies together. Oh, but damn. lyrically you damn, you know. Yeah. I wrote this for all of the women out there. In 2008, Beyonce found herself in hot water when she told a concert audience that she wrote Irreplaceable for women everywhere, except she didn't write it at all. Neo, who penned the hit, explained in 2011 that the song was originally written for him, but he realized it would come across as a little bit misogynistic for a man to sing it. While Beyonce didn't write the song, Neo had no issue with her taking credit for it, admitting that she put her own spin on it. Still, it raised eyebrows when she claimed ownership of the track. Now, let's talk about Bootylicious and that Stevie Nicks sample. That famous guitar riff from Stevie Nicks' Edge of 17 in Bootylicious was a key part of the track, and Beyonce famously claimed it was her idea to use it. In her I Am Your Wars DVD, she recalled hearing the song during a trip to Japan and how the riff made her think of a voluptuous woman, which inspired her to write a song celebrating women's curves. But it wasn't Beyonce's idea at all. It was producer Rob Fusari's. He wasn't too happy about Bay taking credit for his idea. After hearing her once again claim ownership in an interview with Barbara Walters, Rob reached out to Matthew Knowles, expecting an explanation. According to Rob, Matthew told him, people don't want to hear about Rob Fusari, producer from Livingston, New Jersey. No offense, but that's not what sells records. What sells records is people believing that the artist is everything. As harsh as it was, Matthew's point about the business side of things seemed to be true. Then in 2018, Azealia Banks added fuel to the fire with accusations that Beyonce tries to steal from talented women. She claimed Bay lacked originality, specifically criticizing her for using stolen choreography from a video for Count Contessa. These claims came just after Beyonce and Jay-Z wrapped up their On The Run 2 tour, sparking more controversy around the idea of Bay borrowing Borrowing from others without giving credit. I realized that my ex dancer Ashanti choreographed for Beyonce and stole the original choreography Jip Jock made for Count Contessa. Banks wrote, before suggesting Beyonce give her a job. Beyonce needs to get over herself and just hire me. Azealia Banks has doubled down on her criticism of Beyonce, claiming that Bay has consistently ripped off talented women. She argues that while Beyonce promotes female empowerment, she undermines it by stealing from talented women and trying to one-up them. Banks believes that Beyonce needs to get real with herself and humble up, acknowledging the full work and creative visions of other women who admire her. We don't need any more Beyonce thought moments, Banks quipped. I have no clue why she wants to be a regular B. Back in 2016, Banks took it a step further, accusing Beyonce of exploiting black female artists. She tweeted, she's not an artist, she's a poacher. She takes food out of darker skinned women's mouths and pretends to be inspired. Banks also suggested that Beyonce should stay in Jay-Z's shadow, keeping out of the way of creative women. Another individual who has similar grievances is songwriter Tiffany Redd, who has her own issues with Beyonce's alleged appropriation of her work. I think Beyonce is a brilliant artist. I also think that Beyonce is a hypocrite. Janet Jackson might be America's sweetheart, but when it comes to seemingly calling Beyonce out, she spared no expense. She missed oh my God. the part. She was supposed to perform at the party. But she missed it because of there was it was storming in New York. And so you're just saying she's irresponsible. Janet's revelations were met with mixed reactions. Tina Knowles, Beyonce's mother, responded to these claims, defending her daughter's creativity. However, the controversy remains. For industry veterans like Michael Jackson and Prince, who prided themselves on originality and authenticity, such actions were likely seen as shortcuts to success. The debate over Beyonce's place in music history took another turn when Charlemagne the God suggested that she could surpass Michael Jackson one day. Beyonce, if she's not already, she's absolutely will be on that same level. She will be looked upon in the, in the same regard, if not more, as Michael Jackson was. 
This statement was seen as highly disrespectful by many MJ fans who felt that Michael's life and career were cut short, making such comparisons unfair. It's important to consider that MJ's impact during the era of social media would have been even more massive. Chance the Rapper also weighed in on the debate. While speaking to college graduates at Dillard University, he gave a bit of a hot take after saying that the former Destiny's Child member's performance at Coachella was better than any Michael Jordan performance ever. Beyonce's performance was better than any performance Michael Jackson ever did, he said. That woman, better than Mike. Black woman, better than Mike. I said it. I understand that's upsetting to a few people here probably. We have to erase the fear and stigma behind eclipsing our heroes. He later continued, Beyonce, in real time, in one fell swoop, she eclipsed every Grammy performance, every Super Bowl halftime show, every talent show, literally. Any performance from the beginning of time, in contrast, became outdated and obsolete. This was Coachella. In any case, Michael Jackson and Prince were not just entertainers, but pioneers who pushed the boundaries of music and performance. Their subtle disses towards Beyonce reflect their high standards and the pressures of maintaining artistic integrity in a rapidly evolving industry. At the same time, Beyonce has undoubtedly cemented her place in music history. Despite the criticisms, Beyonce has continued to rise, becoming a powerhouse in the music industry. However, the stories of Michael Jackson and Prince offer a fascinating perspective on the ever-evolving landscape of music and the constant quest for authenticity. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.